Hey folks, welcome to another round of Modern. We have Krista Oskopinski playing her Boros Obosh mid-range deck versus Michael Mapson, who is on the Naya Vivian pod deck. Uh, Krista's deck, we've had a feature on the channel a couple times beforehand, is currently, I believe, this game, she was 20-0? and 0? Uh, She's been on, like, a crazy win streak with it, so, like, we want to feature it uh, pretty often, because, like, the deck's cool, and coincidentally, either today or tomorrow, uh, there's a video going up uh, with well, a deck profile, a deck tech, of this Obosh mid-range deck, or Bobosh, or, uh, Boros. Oh, I said it right that time. I, <laughs> usually I have no problem with the intro, where I'll be like, ah, oh, hey folks, this is, <laughs> welcome to this, it's X versus Y, except I did this, I think, nine times, because I kept mispronouncing Boros, Bor Boros, 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 I keep saying Boros, and I don't know why, it's painful. Alright, Mapson has got a Urza Saga, Stomping Ground, and Ignoble Hierarch going into a Devoted Druid. Now, if you're unsure about what I mean, what, what Vivian Pod is, it plays Vivian uh, Alta Hunt, which is the new Planeswalker from the Streets of New Capenna. And it has an uptick ability, I believe it's a plus two, could be a plus one. Um, and it's very similar to a card that is banned in modern called Birthing Pod, hence the pod name. Uh, so, what it does, you sack it with a creature, and then you can search your deck for a creature with one CMC higher than that, or mana value, uh, and put that onto the battlefield. So what you do is you play a card called Planebound Accomplice, uh, which has an activated ability of one red, and you may put a Planeswalker from your hand into play, sacrifice at the end step. So you put Vivian into play, activate Vivian, sacrifice the Planebound Accomplice, find Felidar Guardian, Felidar Guardian, then blinks Vivian, Vivian then react, can you reactivate Vivian, Sacrifice the Felidar Guardian. Go and get Karmic Guide. Karmic Guide brings back the Felidar Guardian. The Felidar Guardian then blinks to Vivian one last time. And then you sacrifice the Karmic Guide, I believe, and go and get uh, Kiki Jiki from the deck. And then you have the ability to make infinite cats and then kill your opponent. I'm pretty sure that's the end goal. Every time we've had the deck on camera, they put it, and it start, the combo started to go off. The opponent has scooped to do the combo. So I haven't seen the final step. I just know how like ninety percent of it works. Meanwhile, Krista has evoked a fury by pitching a blood moon, killing absent creatures, and then ephemerated it. Her deck is very aggressive. Uh, <laughs> played a ragavan in the same turn. Uh, so like, I'm not a fan of Bor of red white, right? Bor uh, Boros, Boros, Boros. <laughs> it's not something that I'm like, oh yeah, I want to play this color combination. I'm much more of an is-it type of person, you know, I like red-blue. Um, this deck is sweet. Honest to God, it's something I would probably build and have a shit ton of fun playing. And if you're looking for a fun deck in modern right now, and you just like red cards, and like cute white card interactions, I would, I would play this. Like this card right here, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, is a saga from the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty set. Where the first ability is to make a 2 2 goblin that when the goblin attacks, that goblin right there, uh, it creates a treasure token. The second chapter ability is you may discard up to two guards and then you draw whichever amount that you you discard. So if you discard one, you draw one. If you discard two, you draw two. If you discard zero, congrats, you draw zero. And then the third ability is it transforms, it flips over, trans it exiles itself, and then it flips over uh, to a creature side that's effectively Kiki Jiki. Um, and it is, it's quite good. Chris gets to do some disgusting things with the pitch elementals and that uh, that card right there. To the point that I don't know if any creature combo deck, honest to god, beats Chris's deck. You can do it quicker than she does her thing. Uh, like, you could combo off and she just does not have the solitude. That is an option, but... I don't know. We, we've had her on camera before like, for multiple times, and she's just... It's been egregious how strong this deck has been. Did Breaking Man not attack last turn? Oh, Maps made a construct last turn, I guess. That would make a lot of sense. Trying to think of other cool things in her deck. We did the video. I have a picture of it. And she also graciously comments her list, I think, every time we have her on camera. 
Um, where is this picture? I know the main board, she had three blood moons, and that terrifies me. As somebody who likes to play big mana decks, and by big mana decks I mean prime time, prime time, uh, blood moon in the main, scary. Yeah, so she's got two copies of Ranger Captain at Eos in there, four copies of Season Pyromancer, uh, two copies of Giver Range, which I honestly got, I forgot about, until she played it in our other feature match that we did with her this week. Uh, she's got a Grim Lava Mancer in there. She has just constructed this deck to do all types of really cool things. And I am about it. Alright, so Mapson has two constructs and a Shadow Sphere on the board. Which is uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Also, one of the other cool interactions uh, she can do with her deck is, and specifically Fable of the Mirror Breaker, uh, Season Pyromancer. You can just blink it to draw two cards if you have no cards in hand. Pretty, pretty good value. Here comes buying Obosh to the hand. Uh, her deck isn't limited by the companion restriction Obosh has. It just it flows really well. It's really impressive. Terrifying, but impressive. Now, the Vivian Pod deck does have a couple different angles of attack, right? It is not just all in on the Vivian combo. Ideally, that is what you want to do. That is like the you have to have this interaction this very instant. If you don't, you die. Uh, But um, it can go wide with Saga or with Saga Constructs, you have Shadow Spear, like you have the general Urza Saga beatdown plan, there's Devoted Druid shenanigans with Luxior, uh, there's Karn the Great Creator to like, you know, finalize the Luxior plan, I'm pretty sure there's a like Walking Ballist in the sideboard, just to fish and be like, alright, cool, infinite mana, die. I see the plane battle accomplice in his hand. If he has Vivian, if he just, I don't know if he has Vivian's issue. We are, I think, for something fetch. <laughs> Format of Karn the Great Creator? Karn the Great Creator. This deck float, like, both of these decks, I love, right? Like, they speak to my desire, like, the things I like about magic. The pod deck, the combo deck, with multiple angles of attack, I'm about that. And then I just like some mid range shenanigans. It's not typically what I, I play. Man, mid-range strategies when they work are just like the coolest thing. They're very rewarding to play. They're very rewarding to watch play as somebody who has to watch hours of modern content each week. Uh, some, most of the time twice. Uh, it, it's really cool to watch after. So I like Grixie's Death Shadow a lot. I actually really like watching that deck play. Uh, so I'm hoping somebody at the shop, if any of... My lovely customers are listening. Build the blue black shadow list and I will put you on camera because I want to watch you play. So it looks like fun. Alright, so Chris is gonna untap here. How many constructs with three threes? Yeah, I guess there's no good attack there. Alright, so Fable the Mega Great Three is going to flip. Now the creature uh, does have some like this because it gets exiled and then brought back. Uh, it's not just like transformed. So you can't immediately throw it out. Uh, we cast the Season Pyromancer, discard it to the Obosh, we're gonna make one uh, red elemental and we're gonna draw two cards. Season Pyromancer. A card I talked about a while when Luris was legal and I was like, you know, this card, man, if like Luris ever gets banned, this card is gonna pop. And it did. It's not like the format staple that I kind of, or the red format staple that I kind of thought it would end up being, but it's, it's pretty damn good.
Gonna play tap Sacred Foundry for turn. And I will pass turn to you. Just gonna pass. A lot of uh, <laughs> looking at each other, trying to do things. Now, granted, Madison has a pretty good hate piece with the Crown the Great Creator here. Krista wants to make treasure tokens with Ragaman and the Goblin Warrior. Can't really do that. that the hell is that? Torment script? No. What did you get? What is that card about to? <laughs> oh, it's the Snaring Bridge. Duh. You say, what did you tap three mana for? But that would be that. Passes the turn. Bridge is an interesting one because I don't know if Maps can just like dump all of his cards in his hand or not this turn or each turn. He's kind of just like dried out on land. Right. I don't remember if Krista has a main deck way to deal with artifacts though. Does she have stuff out of her sideboard? Uh, yeah, she does. She has March of Other Wizard Light and Prismatic Ending. Could also just burn him to death with Grim Lava Mancer. It is an option. I have those two cards in hand. We're going to attack in four five here. The Ragavan, the Goblin Warrior, and the Elemental. I believe... Uh, probably not attacking in at maps, I'm probably attacking in at Karn. Yep, Construct's gonna eat the Ragavan. Karn's gonna go to one. I have to just drew a second Karn, the Great Creator. Mana plays plain bound accomplice. I don't know if he has a Vivian in hand. Playing out the accomplice is a little weird. Uh, I think the biggest issue is he fetched a forest earlier, but I'm pretty sure he's supposed to fetch a stomping ground. Even if Chris's deck is aggressive, I think you just need that like color fixing. Right now he only has one red source, so if he had Vivian in hand, he could have like slammed that oh. while she's tapped out, uh, and then the, did the Vivian combo, but... Alright, Ranger Caps with Eos. Uh, find Grim Lava Mancer. Going to get Grim Lava Mancer. Mm -hmm. Going to play the Grim Lava Mancer. Grim Lava Mancer, you have two cards in hand? Correct. Uh, <laughs> he's at Karn. Attacking in four. Is Pyro a two? I thought it had three power. Uh, I don't think it's three mana, three, two. Maybe it's a two, three. That's gonna be your turn. Copy goes away. Karn has died. I would love to draw land. That's all I want. There's so much going on. <laughs> all I want is to draw some freaking land. Kristoff has a pretty imposing board state. He's got five creatures. He can make a 6 1 at a whim. Actually, no, she has six creatures. The fable, the reflections of the Mirror Breaker, or whatever it's called, are. It's Reflections of Kinky Jiki. Is that what the card is called on the backside? Right. Uh, construct? 
going to make a copy of Solitude. The copy is going to exile the construct token. Right, so he has two cards in hand. I imagine Karn will be taking a good amount of damage here. Does Lava Mask do two damage to any target? Or is it specifically player? So isn't there like a functional errata for because of planeswalkers on anything that says target player? The monomancer steals two to target creature or player. Okay. Alright, there's a blood moon. Smoke down. There's so much on this board. <laughs> There's so much going on. Right, let's go to sack the Ranger Captain of Eos here. Make it so Mapson cannot cast non creature spells this turn. Let's go to pass. There's three cards. Everything on the squad can attack. Including the Den of the Bugbear. It's going to March of Otherworldly Light, the Ensnaring Bridge. Uh, going to combat. Uh, no, we can do that. Essentially. I think we're making, uh, making another copy of Solitude. Attacking in for... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I know what the heck's the other thing. Trigger? Uh, hit me for treasure token. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, Ragaman. Okay. Should be twelve damage? Thirteen damage? Something like that? Eleven damage. Math. Alright, math is gonna be twelve. Eleven, you said? Eleven. a wooded foothills off the top of the deck. Uh, go take the turn. All right, Maps is going to concede game one. Chris is going to take your pick up the first one. We'll be right back with game two, folks. And we are back with game two, folks. We got Maps on the play here. Going down to what looks like a mulligan of six. We're going to take our foundry pass. Had some nice little frame delay over there. It looked like fantastic. Chris is going to lead on Aaron Mesa. Go. Looking a lot like she did uh, the first game. <laughs> Mavson's going to play a Devoted Druid. And the question is, does he get Solitude Ephemerated here? There is the totally innocuous planes getting fetched. Down to the bugbear coming down. Solitude. Pitching Ephemerate. Okay. I'm going to hit the Devoted Druid and going to Ephemerate it. So we have one Ephemerate coming back in the upkeep potentially for a rebound trigger. The boomerang is coming back around. I like that, like, as Modern Horizons 2 progresses, we just get to see how absurd Ephemerate is. Like, everyone just keeps trying different shells, and it's like, yeah, no, that's pretty damn good. I feel like first it was with Eternal Witness, and you're like, oh, you just infinitely loop it. Ah, uh, because the Yorion deck, and then now, like, with Solitude, like, well, I guess Grief Ephemerate Solitude was the first one, right? The original Boogeyman of MH2. Attacking for three. Chris is going to go to 22. Maps is going to go to 17. That's the best math I will do all day. Casting a season fireman here. We're going to be discarding two lands. So no element elementals, but going to draw cards and hopefully clear out uh, any potential flooding issues. 
going to unholy heat the solitude and the end step. That side was going to cook too. It's going to be Besiege of Who Endures. Plays on a Ragaman. Just passes it right. Marshfots will be our land four turn this time around. Attacking in with a Seated Pyromancer. Matson just taking the damage. 215. Ah, it is a two. It does have two power. Not that I doubted it. I just. Wasn't sure. Okay. Fetching a sacred foundry end. Are we shocking it? a hedge mage coming down. So if you don't know what this card does, I uh, I don't blame you. It is a cool card, but yeah. <laughs> so it is a two cup or two generic and a hybrid red white. When hedge mage enters the battlefield, if you control two or more mountains, you may destroy target artifacts. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you control two or more planes, you may destroy target enchantment. So you get to pop two things because. Uh, but you can pop two things. Typically, you have at least one shock lamp plus two basics. And it's, it's pretty cool. We had it, uh, I forget what she played against the one time we had her on camera. And she like got max value out of this card. Yeah, we're gonna do it. All right. Good. Um, I so we ephemerated. Ephemerate again, we're gonna discard the draw cards. Dropping the Fable of the Mirror Breaker, okay. Uh, oh, we from the Hedge Mage to pop the Construct, that's what that was. Okay. You fetch down to 18, potentially going to 16, which I think is what that number says. <laughs> going down to 18. Really neat, cool, and sonic. Unless I miss damage, it's also possible to be real with you. Cracking in for some damage here. Goodbye. Ragavan is going to trade with the Den of the Bugbear. Christy is prepared with the tokens. That is solid. Honestly. <laughs> a lot of magic players just don't bring their tokens with them. I don't. I always forget. I always have like a random Pokemon card that I'm like, this is my treasure because I forgot. I'm going to play Secret Foundry on for turn. This passes the turn. Raw. Plays out a plain bout accomplice and just passes it turn. Moises, you've seen me play magic. I don't, I, I don't care about things. Turn, play Fable the Mirror Breaker. Mirror Breaker? And comes cracking in for a lot of damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. Kamas is going to jump in front of one of the tokens. Or one of the one ones. This is going to fetch. With 16, 17. I mean, not Yorian. Obosh? Yes, put Obosh on. All right. I think he just bought Obosh to hand. That was the play line. 
I mean, there's a chance. I'm asking to just draw Vivian. We're in there. There's a 4 out of 49 chance, actually. Not even bad. That's not even 8. Takes a look at Obosh. Uh, what Obosh says is if a odd source permanent is going to deal damage, or not permanent, if a source of or an odd a source of the odd CMC does damage, it does double the damage. To so bolt is six, Fury is twelve, uh, which I'm pretty sure just means Madison dies on the crackback if he doesn't have Vivian here. Because the tokens won't do double damage, but Pyro is going to hit for four. Hedge Mage is going to also is going to hit for eight, I believe. There's an eight level hierarch. Pass the turn. Mayor Break is going to hit two. to not discard cards or draw cards. That, uh... <laughs> very, very terrifying. Okay, four mana. Into March of Other Limited Light. Attack in. It's a treasure. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm actually, like, hold on, before that. So four attack. Looks like we're thinking on pre combat or pre combat. Bolts okay. the Pyromancer. Takes five and does not draw Vivian. All right, that is going to be game two going to Crystal, and that'll be the match. Thank you for watching, folks, and have a great rest of your day.